Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for ETN versus Remote Access Software presentation by NetOp. We appreciate you joining us today. Um, my name is Sam Heine. I'm the Product Solutions Director here at NetOp. I've been with the company for a little over 13 years, and during that time, I've had the real privilege of, of working with some great colleagues and some with, uh, and with large organizations around the world, including technology partners that have focused on a variety of different industries. And what really draws everything together here at NetOp, kind of the, the guiding force for our, our customers, for, um, for the organization, is really security. Uh, so if you are at a company, whether it be large or small, um, a, a nonprofit, a government institution, and you're looking for secure remote access, there's a good chance you have used NetOp in the past. And when you look at the, the people that we do work with, uh, NetOp works with nearly a quarter of the top 100 retailers, almost half of the largest banks in the world. Again, industries that are really highly focused on security. My office is located in the United States, and here in the U.S. we work with about half of the Fortune 100 companies. Our worldwide headquarters is just outside of Copenhagen, Denmark, and in Europe we work with nearly 60% of the largest companies in Europe identified by the Financial Times. But you probably didn't come to this presentation to, to learn about NetOp. You're more interested in learning about VPNs, remote access, software, um, and the challenges and the differences between those two. So let's just jump into that topic. But first, I have a question for you uh, in the audience. In order for me as a presenter to make sure that I'm providing you with really good information that's tailor-made to your needs, it would really be helpful to know what remote access tools you're using today. So take a quick moment, uh, fill out the, the little survey that's popping up on your screen, and let me know um, what remote access tools you've been using. I'll give you just a moment to answer that. And while you're answering that, answering that question, let me point your uh, attention to another feature in this presentation software um, that also lets you ask questions. If at any time during this presentation you have a question about the material, um, whether it be about the material being presented or questions about uh, NetOp Remote Control, please write those down and I will make sure to try and get you answers at the end of this presentation. All right, we're going to move forward now with VPNs. Uh, and the virtual private network um, is ubiquitous, right? There are, they're hard to escape. <laughs> and, and for most organizations, you don't want to escape them. They're integrated into our, uh, into our technologies, into our networks, into the way we do business. If you're accessing uh, the cloud, uh, whether it be through Microsoft or Amazon or any of the other cloud providers, you likely have VPN access into that cloud environment. Um, organizations that have offices in multiple locations, uh, like we do here at NetOp, have site-to-site -site VPNs to give us good connectivity between our various offices. Um, the VPNs are, are built into our hardware, into routers, into switches. Um, it's both for commercial purposes, for businesses, but even at home. Uh, my little wireless router has a VPN capability built right into it. So they're pretty much everywhere in 2019. But just because you can find them everywhere and because they're ubiquitous in the environment doesn't mean that they are your only option, and it definitely doesn't mean that they are the right option depending on what your remote access needs are. And that's what really brings us to this topic. When should you be using a VPN versus when should you use remote access software? There are different scenarios, 10 different scenarios that we've identified to really help you think and to crystallize your thoughts around what, what do I need to consider? When should I be looking at remote access software versus when should I be looking at a VPN? And the first is the easiest. That first scenario that we want you to, to really think about is uh, if you don't have a VPN. So what really think about is remote access, secure remote access to a device or a piece of equipment, then you need to look for an alternative. Remote access software, um, whether it be NetOp Remote Control or one of the other solutions out in the space, is going to give you the remote access that you need. And again, coming from a security background, we really encourage you, and I would encourage you personally, to look at the capabilities of these different remote access software solutions and try and find something that's going to provide you good access controls, good authentication options, strong encryption, good logging. There's a variety of different things that you need to look for. 
And, and we can handle those, and you can look at our website, or we, we can do that in a different presentation. But today, if you don't have a VPN, remote access software is going to be a great solution for giving you the access you need. There are a variety of um, reasons and situations why a VPN may not be a good solution for your organization or for the, the specific need that you have. And if you're a part of an IT team, whether you're at a help desk or if you're in a support scenario, and you're looking to support people on shared or open networks, that may be one of those times when a VPN is simply not available to you. Imagine if you're um, in the scenario where you're a help desk professional and you've got uh, salesmen that are out traveling, and they may be at a hotel prepping for a meeting. They may be on site at a client's office and they need assistance, or, or maybe they're just doing some work in a coffee shop. They're connected to a network. You can access them potentially via phone and, and via the Internet, but if you want to do real support on that device, if you want to access their computer to do file transfer, screen sharing, so that you can support that individual, a VPN is just not going to work for you. But remote access software is, is definitely the right option, and it's going to give you all of the power that you need to provide that support without a lot of the headaches that trying to identify, find a, a virtual private network or an open VPN. Those, those can just create more problems they're worth than uh, in these types of environments. The next idea there is, you know, okay, you've got folks who are in an open network. They, they don't have access to, to a VPN, but what if you need to access a device on a network that you don't control? Similar to um, having a, a salesman or a, an employee traveling, if you are a, a vendor or if you are a, a support professional, a service provider, and there's a, a server or a kiosk or a piece of equipment in maybe one of your customers' networks, how do you provide access to that device? Um, it can be a real challenge to get VPN access into someone else's network. You need to talk with the network administrator. You have to open up ports on the firewall. You've got to create the different rules. There's all sorts of different things that need to happen in order to access that equipment. And oftentimes, that can be a real challenge. One of the big conversations that we always have um, here at NetOp is vendors coming and talking to us just to handle this exact problem. There's a piece of equipment, and the, the owner, the, the person who runs that equipment within the network, um, doesn't always have access to the, the network you know, systems administrator. And yet, they need to be able to provide access to the equipment to their service providers, and so they're really kind of stuck. But if you've got a good remote access software tool, and you'll, you'll still need to work with your IT you know, folks, you'll still need the system and network administrators to assist you in many cases, but remote access software is designed these days to work right over the Internet. Um, it doesn't require you open up a lot of different ports. There are ways to get in and out of the network that are still very secure um, without compromising network security and without introducing a VPN. So again, if you need, to device, if you need access to devices that you uh, don't control on a network you don't control, consider remote access software. Now, the, the other scenario, not the other, but another scenario that we, we often run into, and, and one of the things that we hear just time and time again from our customers, is that not only setting up but then administering a, a VPN can be, very, it can be really complicated. Um, so if I'm, a, um, if I'm a retailer and I've got um, point-of-sale machines and I need my vendor to come in and support those, uh, again, how, how I create that connection for the service provider and the device, or if I have employees that need to be supported by an outside resource, talking to the systems administrator, talking to my IT folks, and getting the necessary configurations in place for a VPN to work, that's a challenge. So when you run into this situation, or if you are in the situation where you are discovering that it's complicated to administer, set policies, protect your network through a VPN, it's a good time to start thinking of remote access software and the ease of use and the benefits that derive and come from switching to that type of solution. Another complicating factor when, when really looking at VPNs, not only are they, they hard to configure, but if your network, if the topology and topography of your network is highly segmented, that adds another layer of complexity into administering the VPN 
and finding pathways for connectivity. Security best practices and network administrators these days know very well that good segmentation is required, right? If I'm, if I'm eliminating threat vectors and I'm, I'm following security best practices, I'm going to make sure that my kiosk equipment, you know, if I'm a bank, I don't want my ATMs on the same network segment as the, the terminals that my cashier, that my cash. I don't want my point of sale systems to be on the same network segment as the, the computer I use in the back office to schedule my employees' hours. So having good segmentation with um, subnets, VLANs, um, switches, I mean, there's lots of different ways to segment your network, but each time you put that segmentation in place, you're making it harder and harder to create VPN access. You now need multiple VPNs to access different segments. Whereas if you look at a, a tool, a remote access software tool, you can find a single tool that works in all of these different environments that can be configured to provide you a single pane of glass to access all of those different devices across those different segments. So it, it eliminates the complexity, it eliminates a lot of the confusion and the different layers that you find, but it still maintains the security through giving you highly encrypted um, and authorized and authenticated uh, connections between your devices. And this is increasingly important for um, institutions, uh, for organizations, and for individuals that are finding they need to isolate different devices. So it's not just about network segmentation, but with IoT coming up and having uh, more and more devices connecting to our networks, we'll find that we, we really want to isolate and keep them off the network. So a VPN, again, the, the title, Virtual Private Network, really gives you an indication of what they're designed to do. It's to give you access to a network of devices. But if you only need access to a single device, that is one isolated device, that VPN and remote access software that does device-to-device -device support is really going to be a better option for you long term. In the same vein of you know, finding a, a specific device and not an entire network, think about your employees. And if you've got employees who need to access the network, whether they're off-site, uh, again, maybe it's one of those situations where you've got someone traveling and they're looking to come back into the network to get a um, – to do some file to, to find a file on the network or to access an application on the network. Oftentimes what employees are looking for is not access to the entire network or to that network segment, but a specific device or a specific resource. And again, when we start talking security best practices, we're trying to mitigate risk and eliminate threats. And one of the key ways to do that is to provide the least amount of rights, the least amount of access that you can based on the context of the, the scenario. So if an employee only needs access to a single device, I don't want to give them access to the entire network and then try and limit them down and put little you know, blocks and, and filters and firewalls in place to, to prevent them. I want to give them just access to that one device. It goes a really long way in in mitigating your risk and minimize, minimizing your threat profile if you can restrict access to that single device. And again, with remote access software, this is, this is, this is what you do. I mean, that's, that's how the software is built. Whereas a virtual private network is giving you access to a network. It's giving you access to a collection of devices. So it might be configured to do that, but it's, it's really pulling that technology in a direction that it wasn't designed for. So if you find yourself in the situation where employees need access to only a single device or resource, again, this is one of those areas where you should consider remote access software instead of a VPN. Similar to your employees, and, and I think it's easy for us to give employees greater access because we trust them. You know, we, we're able to put um, antivirus protections and endpoint protections on their computers. They know our policies. We can do training with them. But if I need to have a vendor come into my network, if I need a, a consultant or a third party to access a device on my network, again, the security controls that I put in place, the security posture that I take really needs to be elevated. So whenever vendors are coming into a, uh, a company-owned network, 
you want to make sure that you are giving that least amount of access that is required and is necessary. And giving access to the virtual private network, you know, to the network is is not as effective, it's not as efficient, it's not as secure as giving them access to just the device that they need, or in many cases, just the specific application that they should be supporting. So imagine your software vendors. So NetOp, we, we produce software. Um, and from time to time, our customers say, hey, I want help rolling out and upgrading the software. Or, I'm looking to change a configuration, and, and we, we would we'd like your support on that. Well, if you're going to bring a, a vendor like me into your network, there's only one thing that I need to look at right now. It's the NetOp software. Um, there may be some additional applications and some, some different areas that would be useful for my support technicians and my professional services representatives to access, but having access to your entire network, that, that may not be appropriate. And so when you're looking at vendors, again, to minimize your, your risk, to eliminate different threat vectors and to improve your security posture, it's not just about giving them access to a device. It's not about giving them access certainly to a network segment. It may be about giving access to just a single application. So what we encourage everyone to do in our conversations with customers, with security professionals around the world, is to make sure that you're looking for tools, um, remote access software tools and other tools that give you that granularity, that let you whitelist specific applications, that let you tailor make your remote access needs and the software that meets those needs so that you can give that least level, that, that minimum level of access, again, to create good security for your organization. You know, the final point that we talk about um, is, is logging and auditing. And it's, it's the final thing that we talk about typically because it's, it's oftentimes the last thing people think of, and it's also often your last resort. But whenever you're giving access, whether it be to an employee, uh, to a vendor, to a consultant, a third party, it doesn't matter. Whenever there is remote access to a computer in your network or when you are accessing someone else's network and their device, having good audit trails and session logging is a must. Not only is it required if you want to be compliant with different regulations like uh, GDPR in Europe or PCI, which is a, a global payment card industry um, here in the U.S. for HIPAA um, and a variety of other regulations at both the state and federal level, good logging that identifies the device that you accessed, the users that were involved, the date and the time that those things happened, all of that information is critical for compliance. But God forbid something bad happens, you also want that session logging to be available so that you can look back at activities and, and figure out what happened. So good, strong audit trails and session logging really are something that we all need in the daily course of our business lives. And unfortunately, it can be really challenging to get that information from a VPN. While some VPNs have logging uh, available, in other cases, you have to add a separate logging tool or you have to turn logging on within the device that you're using to capture what's going on. And whenever you have multiple different steps and lots of different moving pieces, the complexity goes up, the chances of mistakes go up, and it's, it's just going to cause problems. Whereas with remote access software, especially a tool um, like the one we offer, which is NetUp Remote Control, you can mandate that logging happens. In fact, we offer us a, a, a switch, if you will, that says if logging isn't activated, don't allow the connection to happen. And there are other companies, other solutions that have something similar. And we would encourage everyone when you're considering, should I use a VPN or should I use remote access software, to consider that point. Are my logging needs going to be met with this solution? And can I ensure that the logging will happen during that session? Because again, it's critical for your security and it's critical for your compliance that that occurs. So that right there, that's 10 different scenarios, 10 different questions to ask yourself about your access needs. And will a VPN work? Just, just because you have the VPN, is that the right solution? Or should you consider a remote access software tool uh, to take its place? From our presentation software, you can download a checklist which identifies these 10 points. 
or you can go to the URL on your screen and you can access additional information and download the checklist. Um, I think of these slides will be available there as well. So if you want additional information, it's here for you uh, just a click or two away. Now I did mention at the beginning of this session um, that we would reserve some time to answer questions, and I see that some questions are coming in. I think what will be easier is if you, if you haven't yet, please write down that question quickly before the presentation has ended. But for the questions we have now, um, we've captured your information, and I'm going to make sure to send um, answer those questions to individuals um, here in just the next day or so. So uh, it looks like we're running short on time. Um, quickly write down those questions if you have them, and uh, we are capturing all, that, that, all of that information, and we will get those answers to you just as quick as we can. The last thing I'll do today is to just say thank you. So if you've uh, enjoyed the presentation, you know, drop me a note, let us know. Um, but we really appreciate the time you've spent with us. Um, we are looking forward to answering your questions, uh, chatting with you about your remote access needs. So again, thanks, and I, I hope we hear from you soon.